All righty. Hello. <laughs> Today we are talking about inspiration. <laughs> we're back on the Save Wisdom. Back on Save Wisdom. We both feel the need for some inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. Um, so question, well, let's just start with the first one, 781. Who inspires you by embodying potentials you strive towards, like love, courage, or purpose? Do you have any that spring to mind? No. I, uh, recency bias I know that comes up a lot but the first one that springs to mind for me is JK Rowling with her recent uh, oh yeah something like that I don't feel like I would have the confidence the courage the kind of uh, intelligence to be able to string together yes. something like that so I, I do admire that she can speak her mind like that publicly and um, happy to face the repercussions of what she says and correct yeah but does she inspire you though so i must but... be honest i don't really like follow her much typically but i just saw this recent uh thing about correct. the scotland uh anti-hate what is it hate uh, i can't think um, what I it's think called it's... now <laughs> hate crime i can tell you what it should or... be i can tell you what it should be called but um yes Yes, yeah. I know which one you're referring to. Silence, sir. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously you um, kind of know the, a little bit about the, the backstory about her and the enormous success that uh, she had. Yeah. Um, uh, Etc. So already a very um, interesting and inspiring figure, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. But as you said, you know, to now go and um, not just stay out of the conversation, but to be very vocal for what she believes. In. Yeah. Despite the fact that there could be some some legal action, etc. Yeah. So yeah, that's, Although, a, that's a very good one. Yeah. In this case, I think it was really good. Uh, I believe that the um, first minister of Scotland or whatever came out and said that what she said is not worthy of prison time or of being charged. So I think that's really good that publicly it was stated, you know, you can actually say mm. what you think and what you feel about certain things. You know, she was kind of setting the limit or testing the boundaries and seeing what people can and can't do in that instance. But I think that if, um, Joe Bloggs in Scotland with uh, a much smaller following mm -hmm. and less international recognition or whatever and support, yeah. said the same thing. Um, I wonder if that person would have had gotten the same reaction from the First Minister. But that's what I mean, that it's a good thing because now it's set a precedent that this is okay because it's been public yeah. publicly put out there. Correct. She's tested the boundaries and she's been told that this is okay. Correct. So at least she's yeah. set someone of her notoriety has set some kind of, I don't know, boundary about yes. what, what you can and can't say, which I, so I, yeah. I respect her for that. That's <laughs> yeah. No, that's a very, that's a very good um, example. I think, um, you know, Elon Musk and the, you know, standing up for, for free speech. Yeah. Um, not just once, not just by buying Twitter and changing it to X, mm -hmm. but throughout. I mean, there's the, the most recent one is the um, threats from Brazil. Um, I don't know if you kind of no, came across no. that. I think it just happened over the weekend. But, um, yeah, um, Brazil, some judge in Brazil is um, ordered them to, um, I don't know, block certain people's accounts, etc. And I think it's politically motivated. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Elon Musk said, um, nope. So chances are, um, 
it, it looks like they may have to close down X's offices in in Brazil. Okay. Um, and everybody's encouraging every everyone in Brazil to install a VPN so that they can still get access to to it. Anyway, so the the point is, is that they are these modern day versions of typically we would have looked at I don't know Gandhi or Mother Teresa or whoever you know who had the mm. courage to stand up Martin Luther King who, mm. who by the way the more I the more I learn about him he was not the good guy that they're trying to make him out to be <laughs> um, I think that can be said for most of the you know heroes yes. of our times uh, I mean <laughs> correct yeah. Correct. But anyway, so it is good that we have um, in this day and age that we live, we have these very um, um, well-known public figures that are, that are there to inspire. Because I think about the, the, the Gen Z and I don't know whatever comes after Gen Z. <laughs> they, they seem to be the generations, you know, that are now entering the workforce and finding it very hard to either find jobs, kind of a place to stay, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I think I think to myself, you know, these are the generations that are in in fifteen and twenty and thirty years are gonna have to run the world. And I feel that um, they should do a bit more. You know, just looking at the current trajectory and kind yeah. of how how the, those age brackets or those generations, how they behave, it doesn't look like, hmm, we're on a good track. <laughs> so the more the more um, figures they are, the more people they are that can actually inspire yeah. these generations, the better, I think, for all of us. Good answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll let you pick the next one. <laughs> um. Look, here's a question which I think is the most bullshit question that we've ever come across in this <laughs> uh, in this list of questions. How have multidimensional mentors expanded <laughs> your horizons and modeled excellence? What the fuck oh, is a multidimensional mentor? <laughs> Do you know what it makes me yes. think of? Did you ever watch uh, The Good Place? Uh, yes, it was a I series did. with Kristen Bell where Correct. they they think they're in yeah. heaven. Ted and, Danson, yes. yeah, yes. Ted Danson. So there's a scene yeah. where Ted Danson is seeing in like the fourth dimension or something, and it's like about <laughs> he's trying to explain to people what he's seeing. And anyway, <laughs> maybe my, maybe I have just found my purpose. After all, I want to become a multi-dimensional mentor. <laughs> anyway, wow. here's a here's an interesting one. We can spend. I don't know, hours on this one. <laughs> Whose music yeah, or no, words <laughs> transport, uplift, console, or spur you into action? Hmm. Um, Gosh. Um, <laughs> hmm. Look, there are so many. I think we had such a... Um, rich crop of artists mm -hmm. from the from the late 60s to the late 70s and even into the 80s um and then immediately <laughs> as i say that i'm thinking hey hang on hang on there's like late 80s and 90s also <laughs> phenomenal and as these kind of um these genres changed you know, out of each of these genres, you can pick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because I can, I can definitely sit, um, pick out of each of those genres, um, artists, and up to current today. 
people that I think have a wonderful ability to use the music to get a message across um, and to inspire. So if I have to pick um, some examples, I think in the in the late sixties, uh, certainly for me, you know, Pink Floyd were kind of the trendsetters uh, in terms of um, you know a a style of music um, and not conforming to a specific formula that is just, was just made for radio. And they have proven over, I don't know, 50 odd years that they had a message and some of the guys are still going strong. Um, and then a little bit later, you know, the the rock guys like, uh, like Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and even Black Sabbath, I mean, Black Sabbath, um, if you now sit and listen to some of their music and see the message, there's, there's a, a Black Sabbath song, War Pigs. If you're not familiar with War Pigs, um, I highly suggest give that a listen and read the lyrics um, and see that these things are so timeless, actually. Mm hmm because the same stuff just happens over and over again. Yeah. So, the big anyway, returns. <laughs> correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the eighties were kind of like slim pickings, you know, <laughs> we didn't really have, and then towards the, cause, cause the eighties was like synth pop and <laughs> I mean, some, some really great music. I mean, tears for fears, uh, Dexies, midnight runners, uh, you know, on and on and on. Um, but then big influences, um, late 80s, early 90s, Nirvana, yeah. the whole grunge so thing. Apparently it was the 30th anniversary of his death yesterday or this weekend. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, 30 years already. Yeah, so we were talking about uh, wow. what, what he would have been now if he hadn't have... Uh, what one of my friends said painted the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and they they all agreed that he probably wouldn't be alive today because of too much drugs. <laughs> so here's the interesting thing: is, is, I mean, Keith Richards is still alive. I know. Um, I mean, and you know, Mick Jagger. <laughs> Mick Mick Jagger. I, I actually saw a video clip the other day of. Mick Jagger practicing his dancing yeah. at 80 years. <laughs> like, you cannot believe how active and nimble and, yeah. you know. So anyway. Music keeps you young. Kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it, it does, yeah. But uh, I mean, it is an interesting question to ask if I look at um, Kurt's fellow bandmates who were obviously not into the same kind of behavior and so on and um and how successful and mature and kind of um well very mm -hmm. successful they have be become yeah. and stayed relevant um, then it it is a pity you had to lose somebody as talented as that yeah uh, anyway and the, the, my point is just that with each and every genre you get people that um, take on the establishment yeah and the establishment being government politics whatever including the style of music and feel like they want to to get their message across they want to do it slightly differently um, so I find a lot of inspiration even from young young artists uh, Obviously, you would like to see them stand the test of time uh, uh, in terms of the impact that they make and so on. But that there's, uh, it, that there's some wonderful artists uh, that are just starting their careers now and starting to inspire people and uplift and etc. Um, definitely so. Yeah. Um, who do you find uh, inspiring and uplifting? I can't think of 
I, I was trying to think of any, like, one that stands out for me. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's lots, even of, emo- there's lots of, like, songs and things that stir up emotions in me and make me feel a certain way. But I can't think of, like, a single artist. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I love music. I That's love listening to it, but I can't think if there's any that yeah. like will will spur me into action. Yeah. Okay. I think I have a different relationship um, with music that you than you do. <laughs> yeah. So look, I, I I pay a lot of attention to to the lyrics. Yeah. To try and understand, you know, why a song was written, um, and. But it's kind of like the meaning behind it. Um, now, not all music have that. I mean, sometimes song is just a song. It's just a... Generated by Suno.ai. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Capybara, capybara. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I would have been... I would have been really disappointed if you said that there is a song that, <laughs> that inspires you, motivates you. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, what about other art, stories, films? Um, Again, it's hard to like mind? think of one single one, but um, I mean, in terms of literature, and, and it's come up a few times, is the picture of Dorian Gray, which I just recently reread, and I just love the themes in it and this idea of someone who had these like big wild dreams and fantasies about the world and someone planted a seed in his head that maybe the world is not what he expects it to be and suddenly he goes spiraling into this yeah i don't know um so i quite like the themes in a picture of dorian gray i've always liked oscar wilde and just the way that he writes kind of macabre um Mm. yeah humorous but dark humor which feels quite real feels like real life i think (laughs) Mm -hmm. um then again i always just get caught up on something that's recent to me so i've i've just watched a series called time um it's got sean bean in it uh Mm -hmm. jodie whittaker yeah uh bella ramsey from game of thrones um but it's about people serving time in in british prisons for a variety of different things so for example sean bean in the first season is for uh hitting someone while drunk driving and killing someone yeah um and he gets like three or four years or something for that and it's just really interesting so i I like things that are quite realistic and this is quite realistic in terms of what the prison prison system is like and it really highlights that it's not a rehabilitation yeah system and that Mm. a lot of the people that go in there who weren't bad people to begin with become bad people because of the system um and there's a in the second series it's about a woman who goes to jail for uh, fiddling with her electricity or what or she didn't pay her electricity bill or something like that it's like something so pathetic and it was because she was trying to wow. look after her children and how that kind of escalates because she's in prison and what happens to her kids and um so yeah i like things like that and, and i again i think maybe it comes back to that i have this macabre thing where it's quite dark but it feels real and i like things that are realistic um yeah <laughs> it was very dark <laughs> okay <laughs> it uh sounds like a, a series to inspire you <laughs> to not do certain things <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, but it also okay. so oh, it just it gives me compassion for people that maybe i can't relate to because i don't feel like i have the same um, circumstances or reactions to things as they do but kind of gives you some kind of empathy or sympathy for how they get to where they get to and what makes them make the decisions that they make I don't know I like that perspective is it? <laughs> yeah 
is it is it empathy or is it understanding or am yeah. i talking about the same thing yeah yeah i'm not sure i mean can you empathize with something that you've never personally experienced i don't know i think you can but for me just the um the difference between the word the two words is like, like um, if I have an understanding, yes, I can, I can understand what led somebody to behave in a certain way or to take certain decisions. But empathy means that I care a little bit more. I feel sorry for or yeah. So probably just feel... that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness okay <laughs> here's an interesting question um, I'm going to skip to the last one because um... <laughs> the wording of some of these questions is like absurd <laughs> yes yes yeah. like who wrote this section because this person yeah uh, anyway the last question is kind of interesting to me. How do ageless elders <laughs> model integrity, perspective, and graceful navigation of life's changes? So the reason um, I find that interesting is that I think that we or generally people have this um, fixation on elders and the you know what con constitutes elders or that generation that you have to look at for okay so um and I, I don't know, what, you know, what, what is kind of the cutoff point to be considered an elder? <laughs> you know, is it, is it 65? Is it 75? I don't know. Are we looking towards 90? <laughs> yes. But that's kind of like exactly my I, point. I think it's contextual, surely. So it's like, who's, who's the asker or the seeker of wisdom <laughs> or whatever? And who is the provider of wisdom? I don't know. I just think because so, I was at an event yesterday where I was the oldest person out of about 10 people and someone pointed it out. And I was like, oh, does that oh, make okay. me the wise elder in this group of people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, no, but, but seriously, I, I, I have a problem with this in terms of people think that, um, well, first of all, that somebody must, must be a certain age before they have integrity and perspective and graceful navigation of life's changes. <laughs> um, you know, versus exactly like you pointed out, you know, it depends on the context. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends on the life experiences. Yeah. That means that somebody of a much younger age that would not typically be considered an elder actually has all the ingredients that is required to answer a particular question or to give advice in a particular situation. Mm -hmm. But because they lack the years, um, they're not taken seriously. Yeah. So. But I think, so I think isn't that what this question is saying with its weird, with its weird phrasing, ageless elders. So is this suggesting that they don't mean people over a certain age? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Because the first time I read it, I was like, hey, what does ageless elders mean? <laughs> yes. Does that mean like the old lady in Pocahontas? <laughs> yeah. Maybe ageless <laughs> elders is just the, 
just a different way of describing multidimensional mentors. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so my my thinking is just that um, I think you you um, you pointed out of the fact it depends on the context and kind of where you find yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you, you you could be twenty years twenty years old and be the elder in that particular context. Yeah. Um, and I, I would like to see more of that happening. I would like to see more of that happening um, um, in in society in general, where people um, allow people the opportunity to present their viewpoint or their experience in a way that is not dismissed immediately because of age mm -hmm. okay so when i say that well there is greta um, since the ripe old age of 16 telling us to stop driving cars <laughs> and heating houses and doing all those things um no, that's not what I'm talking. I'm not talking about somebody who is just a, an absolute grifter and um, you know uneducated or uninformed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the, the same thing with with most politicians. Um, I think we we all want to see younger politicians in prominent positions. But with the um, correct level of commitment and experience, etc. So, and obviously in business, I think that there's a there's a fantastic opportunity, and that's probably the one area where there's a little bit of a more of a of that happening, especially in the yeah. entrepreneurial world, the where you space. find like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but there's still that um, that interesting phenomenon of um, even in tech, the most successful businesses are started by I don't know, fifty-two year olds or something like that. There's, there's there's some kind of a statistic. So, so obviously the ones that we like to point to are the kind of the anomalies, the one mm -hmm. in one hundred or the one in one thousand. You know. Which is like started by a bunch of um, young people. Anyway, I just feel like there is a, a lot of opportunity um, for younger people to uh, share their wisdom and experience. I think they have a lot to share. Yeah. Maybe we must just work a little bit on the delivery. <laughs> what are your thoughts on do is it is it something that you feel like no 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 you have to kind of reach like um, end of work life stage before you have anything to contribute to society? No, not at all. And Not at all. I had a thing that popped into my head now from, again, something else that I've watched. I obviously watch too much TV. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, it was an NHS miniseries um, about the junior doctors coming into the NHS. And uh, this was working in a hospital or whatever. And, it, and they had this saying about see one, do one, teach one. So mm. it's like you see, you what you observe another doctor doing the procedure. You're gonna do the next one, and after that, you're teaching it. So um, I quite like that concept of like you have mm. to learn something, try it, and then you'll be able to teach it. I'm just wondering if there's any other way of doing that in a business sense or in a wasn't a life sense. Doesn't that come from Socrates as well? It could do. Doesn't everything? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about um, 
you you can only you can only claim to understand something if you can explain it because i know uh, a couple of uh, kind of well-known people richard feynman richard feynman feynman i'm not 100 percent sure about it but anyway i think he was a physicist uh, he was one of the he won the nobel prize for physics and uh he was one of the group of physicists who worked on the um, the atomic bomb project. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he had that principle of you have to be able to teach it. Yeah. Um, I always think that uh, Albert. I think I also read that Albert Einstein was of that uh, yeah. kind of opinion. So anyway, but yeah, that is a very good one. Um, See, you say, see, see, do teach. teach. Yeah. 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 I mean, there is also the other saying about uh, those who can't do teach. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, look, I I, I really, I I think about this quite a lot about um, uh, the younger generations and um, that, I I, will, I wish that they would find their voice, um, and the fact that they are concerned in a lot of cases about what is the world that we are inheriting. You know, um, I can I can fully understand that, but to I don't know to glue yourself to the tar or to <laughs> throw soup over a Rembrandt is not the way to solve that. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to get any of the other generations that are supposedly responsible for whatever mess it is that you find yourself in. Um, that's not going to solve it. You know, the only way to solve it this is, is to, to actually get real leaders. Yeah. I think that those leaders would come in all of these different spheres that we kind of touched on in business, in politics, in music, in the arts, in movies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's kind of like my hope for humanity. Is it's it's great that there are guys like whoever that are taking us multiplanetary. Uh, no, there's only one guy who's doing that, uh, <laughs> Elon Musk. But but it's great that the all of those things are happening. It's great that we have this AI revolution that is taking place, um, and they are, you know, the whoever these tech titans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that they are there to kind of help form that part of the next, I don't know, decade, two decades and so on. But um, really at the bottom here, we need more young Mm -hmm. leaders to stand up. Is that your call to action? (laughs) That is my call to action. (laughs) Come on, kids. (laughs) Give a damn about something. I think it's wrong to to assume that they don't give it up. <laughs> is that what you mean? What you mean? But uh, yeah. But I like. I'm going to go back one question because I know you've mentioned this before. Um, when has the care or creativity of children reawakened your childlike wonder? And I know you've spoken mm. before about what we can learn from children: the fact that uh, they're not afraid to fail and that they will keep going until they yes. achieve something. Um, so there's kind of like this. This gap because as you're saying there's kind of this like later generation of people doing something and there's definitely the young like from birth to whatever age it is of trying things and doing things and not caring about failing and then there seems to be this middle section of people who are scared of everything (laughs) a hundred percent correct yeah i don't know is it um is, is that age are they kind of shrinking that age? It used to be like, I don't know, between the ages of, I don't know, since you start walking, so let's say 18 months, between a year and five years or six years or whatever. 
you know, that you were so gung ho and mm -hmm. afraid of nothing. And, uh, and then we started, I don't know, educating kids earlier. Yeah. Giving children educating. too much autonomy too soon. I don't know. <laughs> no, never mind the autonomy. Is mm. in some ways we took away the autonomy. Mm. So what I mean by that is, this is you're not allowed to try to ride a bicycle without knee pads and elbow pads and a helmet and whatever else. You know, uh, you're not allowed to um, attempt a lot of these physical activities mm -hmm. where you know kids actually they excel at doing those kind of things so um, we start educating them and we start um, I, I, I'm not I'm not sure exactly where I stand when on the thing about allowing them you know too little screen time or too much screen time yeah. or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, so we, in instead of just play for the first five years of their lives or six years of their lives or whatever, we're now kind of at age three or so, we're starting to teach them. Um, we, we're starting to, instead of discovering social norms etc for themselves we start teaching those things mm -hmm. start writing report cards that you know how is little Timmy socializing uh, or not mm -hmm. or whatever you know and things like that which which may be a little bit detrimental to um, the effect that we would like to create I don't know um, it, I, I look. I look at you know things like people are so upset. Uh, the Americans, the Americans are so upset that uh, TikTok is allowed <laughs> to corrupt their children's minds. I saw that on the news the other night. <laughs> and what I don't understand is, is um, they keep on blaming the Chinese for the content that the Americans make and put on TikTok, yeah. and that their kids go and follow. I don't get that. Why is there such a big disconnect? Sure, the algorithm can feed you certain things. Mm -hmm. But this but the algorithm is not going to feed you peanuts. If you only looked at strawberries. Yeah. yeah you that, was a, what that was a question posed to one of these uh, activists against TikTok or whatever, she was saying that the social media platform needs to be held responsible, needs to take more responsibility or whatever. And the newscaster said, but don't you think the parents need to take some responsibility? And she was like, no, 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 that's so easy to say that, but it's definitely the social media platforms need to take responsibility. No, it's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've gone off topic a bit there. <laughs> We've gone off topic creativity of children mm -hmm. yeah and I, how I they wonder that... things there's that video yes. of a little child going through a forest and she's just like in awe of the trees <laughs> i'm a bit like that when i go walking Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i forget that the no fear of failure of yeah. kids uh, and, and 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 not being afraid to make an ass of yourself in terms <laughs> of trying something and trying it again until yeah. you get it right yeah and then the the sheer joy and amazement of uh, yeah. I did it, you yeah. know, I, <laughs> I accomplished it. Anyway. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Herman. We'll probably talk about some uh, of your thinking next week. I know you had mentioned you had a few thoughts you wanted I... to maybe talk about. So. <laughs> yes. Yes, cool. I do. I, I've, I've been making notes um, quite a bit. Um, so I'll definitely have something next time to chat about. Cool. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks.